question is from Landon Bergenthal. Do you believe it's possible to become a professional athlete with a balanced lifestyle? Oh, cool question. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> no. no. Not, no. Even, not I, even close. Not I, even if you pay millions for recovery, you're not, not balanced. Yeah, not a professional. Yeah, have you, I mean, you look at the like the lifespan of like professional athletes and their their injury yeah. rate. And I think anytime you're, tr you're, you're super high performing in any direction, it's going to yeah. take away from you're other an extreme. Stuff. Yeah, you're, you're going to be an extreme. This is also where I think that we all admire them and, mm -hmm. and look up because it, it's it's one of the most ultimate sacrifices. Whatever you've become brilliant or an expert or the best at or a professional at, you've had to sacrifice a ton in your life. Mm -hmm. yep. And most people aren't willing to do that. No. And most people don't want to do that, but we admire people that do, and it's fun to watch. And did, I, I think that's part of what makes it fun to watch is that I could never do that. Did you, <laughs> do, do you guys, I don't know if you guys got this feeling from watching the Elon Musk interview with Rogan, like I did, but as I was watching mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. a few times, you could hear him. He, he sounded like he was, uh, like, like he was tormented yeah. By his own, it's like, like tortured to, by all his ideas. It's like listening to Jordan Peterson. Yeah, yeah, like like just single minded focus. Yeah. Probably not a great dad. Probably not great anywhere else. And you could tell he was a bit tormented. You know, when we talk about balance to the average person, that doesn't mean you can't have periods of extreme achievement. Yes, I think mm. the key Good is point. that your your baseline is balanced. That's where mm. you always go to. That's like home base. Yeah, you know. But then you then there's periods of time. Where you, you stretch yourself, you stretch yourself. Well, man. I mean, for me, the, the the best example I have personally is is competing. Uh, there was a period of four years of my life where I was completely out of balance. Now, how many days a week were you yeah. working out? I was seven days. I was in the gym Every yeah. day. for four for four years. With I mean, maybe I took a couple days off in four years' time of every single day and not missing like weighing and measuring and tracking my food. I mean, literally every single day, super unbalanced. Right. And yes, did I try and integrate family and still be a good boyfriend and still see my family, do things like that? Yeah, I tried to do that stuff and to, to create as much balance as I could. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they all took a back seat to the number one priority, which was becoming this pro bodybuilder. So, yeah. I mean, and that, and to me, that's a very small example. Becoming a pro basketball player or a baseball player or a sport like that is way more strenuous than, I think, getting on stage and, and presenting my yeah. physique shredded. I, yeah, this reminds me of people who they, they'll compete in something like that or they'll become like they'll, they'll do like a high-level marathon or whatever. But because they have no balanced baseline, it's it becomes this extreme swing. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like I'm either shredded for my competition or I'm super high performance for my competition. Then when I'm done, I don't have a balanced baseline. So I end up going in the opposite direction. You turn your governor off completely. I go you, way in the opposite direction. You yeah. know where I, I also see this, and it's not just in professional sports. I see this in super famous uh, social media people. Mm. When you see somebody who is great at Instagram and great at YouTube or Facebook and they're millions of followers. They suck at actually talking to you in person. Right. They, they have, yeah. They've gotten so good at hacking the algorithm and putting out content that makes people want to pay attention to what they're doing. And in real life, they're fucking up all over the place. Yeah. They're a mess with their relationship. They're a mess with their friends and family. I see that They're a, a mess with their social skills because all of their energy and effort has been put into this, this world. That's just with anything. You're going to become yeah. great at something. You're, it's a give and take. You're going to lose in some places. But I do love the point you make, Sal, that... There, I think there's nothing wrong. I went into competing knowing that. Yeah. Right. I went in knowing that this is not something I, I want to do for the rest of my life. This is a goal I have in mind. I know it's a ridiculous it's a season of your life yeah. right here. Yeah. It's a ridiculous goal. I remember having the conversation very vividly with Katrina saying that this is the plan. This is what I'm going to do. Um, bear with me. It's not. It's not going to be the rest of our life. I remember her checking back in with me about two and a half, three years in, going like, "Are you sure this is not going to be the rest of our <laughs> life?" And me going, "I promise it's not going to be the rest of our life." And sure as shit, you know, once we got to a point where uh, no one gave a shit if I was a bodybuilder, competitor guy, anyways anymore. Mind pump was much bigger than whoever I was before. Uh, then I didn't have to anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was the, one of the greatest days was to be able to walk away from doing that shit. Yeah.